Welcome back for the third lecture of this first module. Introduction to socially and environmentally sustainable conversion. From the various crises that we have reviewed so far, let's say that only the economic and financial crises are really at the center of the political debate and concerns. We need to go back to growth, is the motto most heard to justify every new policy. Many are the stakeholders, politicians, companies, banks and European institutions who underline how competitiveness is fundamental, whatever costs it implies, workers' rights, environmental impacts, so on and so forth. But still, debate on the incompatibilities between the current dominant economic system and the social and environmental perspective remains. Seeing the importance of the challenges reviewed before, the priority should be put on providing complex answers able to answer the many needs arising. In that sense, the orientation of energy, urban and industrial policies cannot be other than the complex and structured framework of analysis and action provided by the social and environmental transition perspective that aims to build a so sustainable social and economic model based on rights, redistribution and equality. To invest in socially and environmentally sustainable transition of our society models means to implement tools, for example normative financial and technological tools, that are able to support a concrete transition investing in all aspects of the produ productive cycle and our, on our daily lives, from energy production to products, from buildings efficiency to local food production and consumption, from transport to raw materials and supplies. This means re-territorializing, that is to say, recentering production to local levels, supporting local economies, shorten the distance between production and consumption, help small and medium companies to reduce their impact without penalizing their production costs and hinder their competitiveness. It also means train workers and professionals, recover and transform abundant spaces would they be ex-industrial plants or others, into new centers of production or services to citizens. Invest on increasing the demand of products with low social and environmental impacts. It is clear that notwithstanding the urgency for a model change, plan and implement ecological transition scenarios remain a question of political will. And to do so, as Langer wrote, we need to push for a concrete utopia bringing together the idea of radical transformation with the coherence and concreteness of the context where to intervene. In this third part of the lecture, we will review, first of all, a brief history of sustainable development in international governance. We will see the emergence of the sustainability com concept we will see what happened in Rio in 1992, which we already referred to, but we didn't went more into depth. And we will see from 1992-2012 uh, how we passed from sustainable development to green economy to arrive in 2012 um, to Rio plus 20 that celebrates green economy. We will also review the concept of just sustainability and we will introduce Alex Langer and Sustainable Transition Theories. As we have seen earlier in the lecture part on climate issues, the United Nations Conference on Environmental and Development, which took place in Rio in 1992, is to be remembered as the international celebration of sustainable development as the solution to address the global concern about environmental and climate issues. 20 years later, at the Rio Plus 20 summit, sustainable development left the spotlights to green economy. Our common future, also known as the Brundtland Report, from the United Nations World Commission on Environment and Development, published in 1987, set up the concept of sustainable development, envisioning the environmental sphere and the availability of natural resources in the long term as part of a conservation strategy for future growth. For the children agronomist engineer Nicolo Gligo, director of the Public Policies Analysis Center of the Chile University, 
The well-known paradigm of sustainable development has no value. Sustainable development has many interpretations and relies on the political will to manage the environment. It is a semantic trick as others, which is now very frequent in environmental issues and many citizens are misled. For the well-known Nigerian activist, winner of the Alternative Nobel Prize in 2010, Nimo Bassi, sustainable development has been converted into an oxymoron, a contradiction of terminology. The purpose of it was mainly to accumulate sustainable benefits, military power, and to guarantee the increasing exploitation of ecosystem and vulnerable population. As we have seen earlier, in 1992, Rio de Janeiro hosted the first UN Conference on Environment and Development, also called the Earth Summit, that gathered 178 governments and other 400 delegates from NGOs. It produced the Rio Declaration, which establishes the international institution's definition of sustainable developments and its pillars. The summit also adopted the Agenda 21, establishing a recommendation framework regarding different aspects of sustainable development – health, housing, air contamination, seas, mountain and forest management, agriculture, waste disposal, etc. Moreover, various conventions were approved – the Declaration on Forests, the Convention on Biological Diversity, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the before-mentioned UNFCCC. If some of those had impacts on international policies or established, or established as the UNFCC international government space of negotiation, many remain only declarations of intents with no real effects. For Nimo Bassi, in the last 20 years, the Earth Summit agreements were systematically, were systematically broken and subverted. The global system further got privatized and the comments are reduced because of these pressures. The Agenda 21 has been converted into a taboo for economic powers. Seeing that the economic growth included an environmental friendly phase, many tools and money were transferred to the public sphere to private corporations and international financial institutions following the flow of structural reforms and state diminution, diminution of power. But in 20 years, how core issues have been tackled? More than two decades from the first Earth summit, summit, after a long list of international summits, the evaluation is critical. If we look at main issues underlined as priorities during the Rio summit in 1992, as for example desertification, climate change or biodiversity, UN and scientists' latest reports do not testify of any improvement. On the contrary, the planet is collapsing, and socioeconomic inequalities carry on growing. So what happened that led to no improvement to the social and environmental state of the world? A possible interpretation is that the dominant development model is destroying the planet and increases the violation of rights and inequalities, notwithstanding some redressment attempts. And so we can say that Rio and various summits that followed failed to address the challenges we were given to face. It is important to underline the swift occur between the Rio summit in 1992 and the one in 2012. From sustainable development to the green economy, a solution painted in green to feed the capitalistic system in crisis while providing the public opinion with a simple solution to save the planet. If the words green economy in themselves appears adequate to underline the need for an economy that can answer environmental issues, the green economy is, in our opinion, in its mainstream application, just another face of the capitalistic system that tries to reproduce itself under a new green facade, without, though, changing its approach in terms of social justice and limits of the planet resilience. In itself, the concept does not tackle the roots of the problem, but only use it as a basis on which to propose a series of technologies and processes functional to economic growth. A key element driving the green economy is the valorization of the economy and the transferability of environmental services freely offered by nature, such as water, food, 
and medicinal plants, but also climate regulation, disaster prevention, indigenous culture and knowledge. So in that sense, the Rio Plus 20 Summit can be seen as an institutional recognition of green economy as a driver principle to orientate negotiation toward natural commercialization. In Freys Beto's word, a Brazilian theologist and intellectual, the exchange value of a given good in the capitalistic logic is higher than its value of use. For this reason, natural good need a price. Nature's goods consumers should pay, not only the manufacture price of the good, but the good in itself. It is the case, though, that nature does not have a bank account to receive money for the use of its services. For Nemo Bassi, the increasing commercialization of nature transfers unacceptable burdens to populations and territories and exposes the planet to further risks. The only ones who had great expectation for the Rio Plus 20 summit were the multinational that are leading the system. Welcome back for the third lecture of this first module. Introduction to socially and environmentally sustainable conversion. So if the mainstream application of green economy and sustainable development does not provide pertinent answers to the challenges we are facing, what can be considered as truly sustainable? Let's say we can consider a community as sustainable when it tackles both environmental and social issues. Julian Ageman, in his book Sustainable Communities and the Challenge of Environmental Justice, published in 2005 by the NYU Press developed the just sustainability paradigm, starting from the inefficiency of the mainstream concept of sustainable development. Ageman, as Robert Bullard and many others, is an American environmental justice intellectual, and he puts at the center of the just sustainability paradigm the interdependency of social equity, environmental justice, and environmental sustainability the three core elements to solve the economic and ecological crisis from his perspective. In the collaborative book Just Sustainability's Development in a Panicle World, published by MIT Press in 2003, Edgemein defines sustainability as the need to secure a better life to all, now and in the future, in a just and equal way while living within the limits of our ecosystems. Reading sustainability concept as related to social equity and natural cycles implies to show how well-being does not depend exclusively on the accumulation of goods. Just sustainability pillars are based on the respect and care of sustainable communities, the organic and ecologic integrity, social justice, democracy and peace. In that sense, H-Man intends sustainability as the process implementing social and environmental justice for present and future generations and recognizing rights of nature so to guarantee natural cycles regeneration and self-organization processes. Here, he refers to two elements. On one hand, to inter intragenerational and on the other, intergenerational justices and also to nature's right. Let's define it a little bit. Intragenerational justice has to be understood as the global justice between different peoples of the present generation, while intergenerational justice refers to the justice between people of different generations. Nature rights implies that nature elements are subject of right. That they, right, that they have the right to exist and to regenerate. Today, nature's rights have been included in two countries' constitution, in Ecuador and in Bolivia. Such conception expand the sustainability concept, including social and environmental justice and equity, rights and responsibility of current and future generation, the limits and the reliance of the planet. In order to verify the concrete level of just sustainability in political choices and other actions, H-Man developed the Just Sustainability Index. This practical tool aims to measure the levels of equity, justice and sustainability of policies, programs, 
actions and objectives developed by various stakeholders. He tested the index to measure the level of just sustainability of the major environmentalist organization in the US. The index rate goes from 0 to 3. When the just sustainability in index is 0, it means that in the review of organization mission, documents and programs, no information has been found on social equity or environmental justice. When the just sustainable index is 1, it means that those concepts are missing in the mission but are present in the organization program. Where the Just Sustainability Index is 2, equity and justice are present both in the organization's mission and programs, in intergenerational perspective, but not in an intragenerational perspective. Finally, when the Just Sustainability Index is 3, it means that both the mission and the organization programs and activity are fully coherent with just sustainability concepts. The results of the first test developed by Ageman are very interesting because they show the limits and reasons of the lack of environmental and social sustainability. In his first application of the index in 2004, he reviewed 30 of the main US environmental organizations and almost known had among its mission or objectives the basic assets of just sustainability. Only organizations like World Watch Institute, the Heinrich Boll Foundation or the Earth Council were found with a high coherence with the just sustainability paradigm. It is not a case if those organizations are one of the main to work worldwide on environmental justice or the rights, the rights of nature. Our organization, ASUD, has used an adapted H-Man index to evaluate local non-profit actors who, if on one hand, do not usually use concepts directly related to just sustainability because they did not inherit such intellectual categories, do, on the other hand, implement practices going in the direction of just sustainability. This led us to note how our context bear a cultural delay in this sense, which represents a big obstacle for the development of environmental and social justice and limits the possibility of efficient measures to tackle the crisis. The index also has a great potential to be applied to measure the level of social and environmental sustainability of policies, development plans, etc., and or to provide those policies and plans with a more just sustainability perspective. To look with hope to the future and build true sustainability, it would be fundamental to push for, for cultural actions, research and training that goes in that direction. In that sense, environmental justice movements represent fundamental allies of local administration for the development of sustainable conversion and regeneration. Welcome back for the third lecture of this first module. Introduction to Socially and Environmentally Sustainable Conversion. The idea of a riconversione ecologica, that could be translated into English as ecological conversion or ecological transition, is a term introduced in 1984 in the public debate by Alexander Langer and it is becoming a key aspect and a possible solution to deal with the crisis that we are facing. Alex Langer was an Italian intellectual, and he can be considered as the Italian father of the concept of ecological conversion. Ecological conversion is a term that has a subjective side, ethical and personal, and an objective side, social and structural. It refers primarily to the change of our lifestyles, our way of consuming, the way we work and the purpose for which we would like to work, our relationship with others and with the environment. The conversion is environmentally friendly because it takes into account the limits of our environments, limits, limits which are essentially temporal, either because they deal with the fact that we are mortal beings and we are living in a world that will last also after our death, and for this reason they reach the deepest core of our existence, both because they remind us that we cannot consume in a given time more than what nature is able to produce, 
nor pollute the environment more than it can regenerate. The ecological conversion today calls for the identification of new economic models and defines new sectors in the labour market. As we have seen earlier, in 1992, Rio de Janeiro hosted the first UN Conference on Environment and Development, also called the Earth Summit, that gathered 178 governments and other 400 delegates from NGOs. It produced the Rio Declaration, which establishes the international institution's definition of sustainable development and its pillars. The summit also adopted the Agenda 21, establishing a recommendation framework regarding different aspects of sustainable development – health, housing, air contamination, seas, mountain and forest management, agriculture, waste disposal, etc. Moreover, various conventions were approved – the Declaration on Forests, the Convention on Biological Diversity, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the before-mentioned UNFCCC, if some of those had impacts on international... So now let's review some elements of socially and environmentally sustainable transitions. Already in the late 80s, Langer, a main contributor to socially and environmentally sustainable transition, warned that it won't be the big agencies that will really help to invert trends but rather the thousands of small transitions and reconciliations, the thousand small fastings and disarmaments, the thousand small alternative choices which do not wait for orders, not for unlikely final victories to rebuild. Systematic transition forces the implementation of a transition process based on the following elements. The local production, the different consumption systems education, the requalification of work, the redefinition of what to produce and how to produce, and the combination of environmental and social justice. In this process, there is the need to activate a double process, top-down and bottom-up. From the top, it is necessary to raise awareness of local and national governments on a different industrial policy, so they can guide economic activities towards sustainable productions and products, as well as a fair production system, respectful of workers' dignity. There is the need of effective policies created to rule in details the production systems, what to produce, how to produce it, with what, to whom, and even where. But a so deep change can be achieved only by having also a bottom-up approach and promoting a wider participation of the population involved those working in the enterprises to be converted, and those who suffer the impact in terms of environmental damage and social transformation caused by those companies. To achieve a real and structured change, we have to foster the engagement and the participation of civil society, institutions, as well as private companies that work in the same territory. It is important to recover and diffuse the know-how held by the members of the community and to involve other companies and other communities to cooperate. For local and national governments in particular, such processes could be activated to organize support programs and claims at national or European levels. In the challenge of choosing new productions, we will have to give priority to those that have a potential market, that are somehow safe, goods that will become essential as the effects of the environmental crisis will be more evident. An example are the systems for the exploitation of renewable energy sources, solutions to promote energy efficiency, vehicle sharing, sustainable governments and mobility systems, 100% recycling system, know-how and tools for the, for the preservation and renaturalization of the territory, ecological farming system that employ skilled workers and technology, project aimed at recovering old or abandoned buildings and guarantee the energy efficiency, create laboratories to improve technical skills in extending the life of products with maintenance and repair, and so on and so forth. But in order to launch these new products, markets need to be secure. This can only be done by involving the community or at larger set of communities 
and their local governments. The ecological conversion is mainly a process of restoring the economic relations through the re-establishment of a direct relation between producers and consumers, fostering the transparency and allowing the public control of the transaction process. The direction of this change is clear. We are passing from a world dominated by the concentration of power, large financial groups and big businesses, to a system of powers, industrial plants, businesses, activities, widespread, differentiated, adapted to the local characteristics and communities, but not isolated from one another, but connected by a shared knowledge, made available by the worldwide education and the potential of telecommunication networks. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and I welcome you to follow up with our next lecture, the fourth lecture, called Sustainable Transition Inside. Um, as we started to introduce today, we will follow up in this next lecture and going more into depth into sustainable transition uh, insights. We will review, for example, the intellectual roots of sustainable conversion perspectives, as well as its uh, characteristic. And we will uh, have the chance also to review good examples of ecological conversion in Europe, and in particular in Italy. See you soon!